Hello everyone, FunshineX here. Welcome back to Feed the Beast Beyond Mods A to Z, where we cover every single mod in the Feed the Beast Beyond pack to make you guys experts. Today we are covering a utility mod, mod called Dark Utilities. It's got a lot of a lot of different things. They don't all really work together, but they, um, kind of everything's a bunch of little things that you might need, and you kind of pick and choose what you want. Um, so the first things are these little uh, plates in the ground, and there's different ones. There's three types of uh, vector plates, and these just move entities. So you've got the normal vector plate, which moves you along in a nice little slow pace there. You've got the medium, where it's called the fast, and that one moves you pretty quickly. And then you've got the red, which is the extreme, and you go boom. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So these will move mobs. They're commonly used in a mob farm to move mobs toward an entrance. They'll also move items. Um, I believe let's let's get one just to check yeah <laughs> shoots items along um, so if you need to funnel items into a certain spot you can use those next up you've got a bunch of plates that act as traps when mobs or even uh, players walk over them so you've got one that gives you poison obviously I'm in creative so I don't see the effect but you can see it up there in the, in the corner um, you've got one that gives you weakness uh, one that gives you damage so it's just gonna take straight hearts as you walk over that one um, one that gives you slowness, <laughs> and the next one that get, lights you on fire, and one that does uh, wither effect. So you could really combine these in a mob trap. Um, if you want to add a bunch of cows you wanted to kill, you could use this one to cook them uh, without worrying about lava burning, you know, your drops or anything. This this wouldn't take drops away. Um, you can use this one as a straight up mob farm just to um, slow down mobs. If you wanted to take mobs down to half a heart um, so that you could whack them with a, your fist and kill them, poison them because you know poison will take you down to half a heart without killing you. So it's a perfect trap for that kind of a mob farm for experience. So that's your traps. Uh, the next thing you've got just a simple little item grate. Uh, I'm not going to show any recipes on this really because you can just look it up in JEI or whatever uh, utility mod that you're using for that. Uh, utility grate allows items to pass through uh, but not players. So if you have some kind of a falling mob farm I guess you can uh, land them on this to kill them and the, the, mob, the drops would go through. Uh, but there's probably other uses for this where you want um, uh, items to go through but not be able to fall down in there. Um, then you've got a bunch of these uh, walls. These There's two kinds. The black ones are um, filters and the w other ones are inverted filters. What I mean by that is the black one, when it has a player head, that means a player can walk through it. All right, It filters everything but players. So players, you could use this as a door and only you would be able to walk through it. The inverted ones mean everything is allowed except what it's filtering. So this one is filtering... Um, players so I cannot walk through it. Um, the, then you've got the same thing but with mobs so it's opposite of players. Mobs are the only thing that can pass through here. Players cannot. Then you've got anti uh, mob filters so anybody but a mob can walk through. So then you got a bunch of other ones they're kind of custom so this one is a um, mob filter as well but it's specifically for um, arthropods, so spiders basically, cave spiders and regular spiders. You got one for undead, or I guess this is any hostile mob. So, um, peaceful mob, hostile mobs can walk through, but peaceful can't. Uh, then you got the opposite, this is for peaceful mobs, right? No, animals. <laughs> I don't know, they're all kind of different. Um, so this one, this cow can get through this fence, uh, this wall, but I cannot. So that's kind of cool. If you want to block the cows, then you could use the anti one. Um, this one is for uh, aquatic animals, so squids could go through there. So it's kind of a nice way to set up a squid farm. You would put water, um, you know, this basically make a tank out of these mob filters, and the squids would float around the water, and then they would come out and die. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Then you've got the eggs, which I think are babies. Yeah, so only babies can pass through this one. So that's a good way to sort, um, you know, adults versus babies if you want the babies to grow up and then kill them when they're older, that kind of thing. Um, that would be great for that kind of a cow farm or maybe even for a villager uh, type setup. Uh, the milk one I think is for adults. Oh no, that's for pets. <laughs> so only pets, like if you want your wolves not to go outside of an area, you could use that I guess. Uh, the slime one is for slimes. Um, you kind of have to use a bigger one obviously, uh, but the slime can go through. Um, what's the blaze one? That's anything that's fire resistant you can walk through there. And then you've got one for bosses. Now this one will prevent a boss from moving through the block, or only you know, the white one obviously, but it's not boss resistant. So the wither could still blow up these blocks, but then he 
uh, you couldn't get out if if there were around him where he didn't blow up, that kind of thing. All right, so those are those. They you know have uses. You could find different uses for them. Next, let's look at the automatic feeder. Uh, this is a feeder that holds you know uh, food basically. So we can do like I think carrots work, but let's also get wheat just in case. And yep, you can fit, put carrots in there. Let's duplicate it. Put another one over here. You could put wheat in there. I think you put seeds in there for chickens and, and what whatnot. Um, but all that will do is if you have an animal around here that can eat, it will eat and it will breed basically if it finds another animal that eats as well. And it can be fed with a hopper. It only holds like I think eight charges or ten charges, but you can hopper into it if you want to have a lot more. Uh, so that's that. Uh, it will just keep feeding until it's gone. So you might end up with overpopulation if you don't watch it. That's a cool little thing. I like the block. It's just simple looking. All right, let's move over here. We've got a bunch more utility things. This one is just a timer block. It's configurable to number of ticks. So 20 ticks being a second. So 100 be every five seconds. This would give a redstone pulse. Bing, turn on, there you go. <laughs> um, you've now got the anti-slime block. All this means is slimes cannot spawn in this chunk when you put it down. So if you're building and you accidentally happen to build in a vanilla slime chunk and you didn't want to, uh, you could put this block down and it'll prevent slimes from spawning. Um, this one is a bud detector. Uh, bud detector means any time it detects a change in the surrounding blocks, it will go off redstone signal. So something like uh, pumpkin growing, if you want to have some kind of auto harvesting, this uh, update detector would give, a red, give off a redstone signal when it detected that change. Uh, but it can do a bunch of other things. Um, it just replaces a complicated circuit that you can build in vanilla with pistons. Moving on, uh, you've got the bunch of sneaky blocks. Well, what the sneaky blocks do, well the basic one, is when you put it down, if you click on it with something else, like let's do like wood or something, or or even glass, I don't know, um, it will steal the texture of that block. It doesn't use it up, it just um, makes itself look like that block, which is pretty cool. Now normally just for a block that's kind of boring, why wouldn't I just put a piece of glass down? But there's other usefuls of this. This is a lever that now looks like a block of glass. I can now toggle it just like a lever by clicking on this glass. I think that is amazing. <laughs> You've got this one, which is a false block, which means I can walk through it. So if I put glass on this one, I can actually walk through it. That is really cool. Uh, this one is a torch. So if you don't like the look of having torches all over your base and you'd rather them just blend in with your, with your wood, Bam, that's now a wood torch. <laughs> um, this is obsidian, meaning it'll have a lot stronger. So it might look like glass, but you're gonna take, have to take a diamond pick to break it. Um, this is a pressure plate. So if I stand on it, I think that'll give off a redstone signal. Let's try it. Yep, so when I stand on it, it gives off redstone signal, pretty cool. And the last one is bedrock. Sneaky bedrock. <laughs> cool. Now, how do you make sneaky bedrock? I'm a little interest, uh, interested in that um, recipe. Similar bedrock, however, you can create a mode, you can change the look. So basically, this is probably for more like a custom map where you don't want someone to be able to, um, to break through something or mine through something. You could put this sneaky bedrock in and then it doesn't look ugly like bedrock, but prevents the player from going through. All right, moving on, next row. Uh, these are all wither blocks, meaning they are not breakable by the wither. Uh, pretty cool. So let's get one here. Take a check. quick recipe. It's drop made from wither dust, which you get from killing uh, wither skeletons. Um, so yeah, you can kill a bunch of wither skeletons and get this, make some kind of wither farm uh, where he cannot escape. And it's um, by combining them together, you can get bricks and carved and chiseled and corrupted and checkered. So pretty cool little decoration blocks on their own, but they're also immune to the wither. Pretty cool. This one is a block of TNT. <laughs> that doesn't explode. It's a fake TNT. That's pretty cool. It's used for pranks. <laughs> it's called TNT in the item. It's, it looks a little different, um, but when it explodes, you can't tell the difference when you put it down. It looks just like vanilla TNT, right? Um, if you have Wayla, you can obviously tell the difference, but... Normally, it just looks like a normal TNT block. 
pretty cool. Go prank somebody. Uh, the next one, you've got these pearls. Um, if you harvest, uh, what are they called in the ender? Um, oh, man. Shulkers. When you kill shulkers, these can drop, and then you can make some decorative blocks out of it. That's all they are is decorative blocks. Then you've got a bunch of decorative chests. You start tired of using the same old wooden chests? Well, now you can use, like, glacier and glass and jungle and mystic and nether and royal and sandstone and prismarine. So they're all kind of made with the materials based on what you see. Uh, but they can blend in if you're you know doing a, a build in the jungle. Maybe you want to use a jungle chest so it blends in better. Cool. Uh, you've also got this thing called the Ender Hopper. All this does is pull items into it, into any attached inventory. You can see it does a little cool little effect and then zaps them in there. Um, it's supposed to be better performance-wise than like an Ender Hopper because it doesn't actually use physics and pull the item into it. It just teleports it in, you know, really quick. Um, but yeah, you can use that if you need to pick up mob drops or anything else that's lying on the ground and you want to put into a chest. Um, then you've got a bunch of items um, that are called the, I don't know, like necklaces, potions and stuff, and then a bunch of rings. So I'm going to get into... Uh, survival mode the first set of rings or all the rings basically is they increase your enchant level of your items so if I have a sword and it has fire aspect one on it if I put on this ring it would add one to that and now I have fire aspect two and this go can go in your bobble slot if you have the bobble mod I already have one on there so that just means any sword that I use that um, will get fire aspect. Now, if I don't have any enchants, it doesn't give an enchant. You have to have the enchant first. This just increases it by one. Um, so if I just have a normal a normal sword here uh, and I kill a cow. Actually, I can't spawn a cow because I haven't got passive mobs off. Um, but yeah, if I tried to kill something, it wouldn't, wouldn't burn it. But if I put... Where's enchants? I know it's one of these. Some button somewhere. All right. I guess I can't find the button to do enchants. But if I put fire on it, then it would be fiery too. So you got the same thing. So all your tools that had efficiency would now be efficiency plus one. This is like probably an amazing ring because you could get, it affects all of your tools that you use. Um, depth strider. So you get an increase on your boots. Your knockback on your weapons. Protection on your armor. So all of your armor that has protection would be one more. That would be amazing. Luck of the sea for your fishing pole. And frost walker for your boots. So, pretty cool. I like the concept that, you know, you can wear a ring to make your enchants better. Uh, definitely like that. Um, Alright, well, let's look at these. You've got two mysterious potions. One is good, one is bad. <laughs> if you drink the regular mysterious potion, you're going to get saturation, night vision, and haste for 20 seconds. So, you can use this in place of food, and you can use it when you're mining or in the dark, that kind of thing. So, it's a really nice potion. Um, it doesn't have a crafting recipe. You can only find it in chests, um, in dungeon chests. There's also the anti version. So if we drink, let's drink some milk just to clear away those buffs. Regular milk. I don't think that'll work. There we go. Now if we drink the bad one, you can see I get hunger. I still get night vision and haste, but instead of feeding me, it takes my food. Pretty cool. More milk, please. Now, what also useful with these potions is they are can be used to cure villager zombies and cause villager zombies. So if you look at this, it says, uh, who knows what happened or something else would drink it. So if I um, gave this to a villager, I'm not sure exactly how to do that. You probably just right click on them to feed it to them. I don't know. You guys have to figure out yourself <laughs> how to do that. But if you get that to a zombie villager, it will cure them. If you give this one to a villager, it'll turn them into a zombie villager. Cool. Uh, now you've got these other charms. Let's get all of them here. The first one is the portal charm. Now normally when you're in creative, you can go through a portal instantly. But in survival, let's get rid of it real quick and we can see. It has this blah, 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 before you actually teleport. Well, if I have the portal charm on me... It's like I'm in creative. It's an instant transfer. And this works for both the end and the nether. Although I think only the nether does that time uh, thing. And then it has a cooldown after you go through, so it doesn't instantly teleport you back. 
but then once you go back in, it's instant again. So pretty cool little thing. It just has to be present in your inventory. I think it go in a bubble slot. Let's give that a try. Can we put it in our next slot? Yeah. It goes in a charm slot. Okay. Or the shield slot. Fits in either of those two. So you probably want to wear it in the charm slot. That's what it's made for. Um, you've got the aggression charm. Now, normally, when you attack a zombie, all the other zombies ignore you. If you have the aggression charm in your inventory, then they behave like pig zombies, where if you attack one, all mobs of that type will be aggressive to you. So that's kind of cool if you want to draw a bunch of mobs to you and <laughs> make them come closer to you. Um, the gluttony charm, and we're going to have to just go hit uses on that, I forgot. It allows you to eat at fast speeds. So, like, if I get some bread here, um, I'm not hungry, so can't do that but basically i could eat this bread instantly it would just be like bread 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 so be careful holding it down um but it allows you to eat really fast you don't have to chew it <laughs> so i think that that one's really cool um the focus sash um prevents one hit ko's so if you're fighting a, a boss and you have full health and it kills you that's the only chance this thing will activate then you won't die the most common place this is going to happen is if you are flying. And let's say you're um, at full health and you happen to jump too high, jump from too high, you won't die. <laughs> Basically, you'll have half a health when you hit the ground. Um, I think that's probably the most common use for it is to prevent falling deaths. Uh, the Null Charm. Items will be destroyed. So this is a bit like a, um, I can't remember the thing, it's called like a null void or something. But if you shift right click, it will allow, it gives you five slots of things that it will just delete if you pick them up. So this is great if you're mining and you don't want to get copper or you don't want to get netherrack, something like that. Um, then you could put this on and, and configure it to delete those items when you pick them up. So really cool little um, charm there. And the last one is a sleeping. This just means when you get in your bed, you will instantly be daytime. You don't have to like wait for him to sleep and the screen to fade. And then it was just, you'll just click the right click the bed. It'll be daytime. You'll wake up. So all of those are really quick, um, cool. They're all just dungeon drops. You're not going to, oh, well, I guess that one's craftable. Some of them, okay, so I lied. Some of them are craftable. This one is not. Um, but yeah, pretty cool, guys. Oh, I had the bed there to show. And the last little item is just another mostly cosmetic block. It's colored slime blocks. So if you don't like the green slime blocks, you can make your own custom colored versions. Pretty cool. And that's Dark Utilities. You can see it's just a bunch of kind of random things put together into a, a block. Um, or into a mod. <laughs> but a lot of them have really cool effects that I don't really see in a lot of other mods. So I think Dark Utilities is a really nice addition to Feed the Beast Beyond. Guys, if you like this video, hit my the like button. You want to see more, subscribe to my channel. Don't uh, forget you can download the Feast Beyond, Feed the Beast Beyond pack from the Twitch launcher. And uh, hopefully you guys are now experts. Catch you later. Bye.